Good morning and welcome to all. I'm honored, uh, my name's David Phillips. I, I know many of you in the room, but uh, I'm chairman of the board of the Bilateral U.S. Arab Chamber of Commerce. And uh, I am honored to welcome to Houston this morning His Excellency, Dr. Mohammed bin Salah Al Sada, along with his leadership team and delegation from Qatar Petroleum. Joining the minister from what we call the QP family is Mr. Hamad Rashid uh, Al Mohanadi, the uh, managing director of uh, Rosgas and vice chairman of the QP board of directors. Also a distinguished member of my board, uh, my advisory board here at the Chamber of Commerce. So thank you, Hamid, for all that you do for us. Sheikh Khalid bin Khalifa Al Thani, CEO of Qatar Gas. Mr. Nasser Jada, CEO of QPI, Qatar Petroleum International. Mr. Saad Al Kabi, Director of Oil and Gas Ventures with the QP. Nasser Al Hajri, Assistant Director of Downstream Ventures of the QP. Ali Nasser Telfat, Director of the Office of the Chairman and the Managing Director of the QP. Taib Bel Mati, Senior Advisor of Gas in the Minister's Office. And Mr. Khalid Al Qasim of the Protocol Assistant uh, in the Minister's Office as well. So thank you, Your Excellency, for traveling to the U.S. and for taking your valuable time this morning to join us and we're gonna do our best to stay on schedule. We have some very, very tight meetings with the mayor of Houston and others this morning as well, so we're gonna to try to get, uh, stay on schedule today. I also want to welcome this morning and to recognize the Consul General for the State of Qatar, the Honorable Faisal al Hanzab, and thank you, sir, for all of the work that you do for us and you've been helping us a lot lately. We're gonna be leading a U.S. delegation led by the mayor of Houston to Doha. Uh, in about three weeks, and uh, the Consul General has been very helpful uh, in that regard as too. Also has the Consul General from the uh, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia that we welcome this morning, the Honorable Sultan Al Angari, and thank you, sir, for all of your help uh, in getting our visas together for our trip and stop by Saudi Arabia on the mayor's trip coming up soon as well. The Consul General of Egypt is with us this morning as well, and the Deputy Consul General of Brazil and so we welcome the diplomatic corps that's with us this morning. I also want to recognize a young lady for all of her work at the city of Houston's uh, airport, uh, Saba Abishal, making sure that the, our delegation arrived safely and expediting uh, through the airport. So thank you, Saba, for what you do. And last, I wanted to, and I saw her a second ago, Elizabeth Ames Jones, where are you? And there you are. If you could stand, Elizabeth. Elizabeth, Your Excellency, as the former chairman of the Texas Railroad Commission, that would be your counterpart in Texas. Uh, our, our Ministry of Energy is our Texas, our Texas Railroad Commission, and uh, Elizabeth just retired in February of this year as chairman of the Texas Railroad Commission. So thanks for coming over from Austin today. Your Excellency, as all of our members in this room very much know, the Bilateral U.S. Arab Chamber of Commerce is a nonprofit organization. So we exist solely at the discretion of and on the membership and sponsorship by our member companies like those that are with us today here in the room. So I'm honored to thank the following companies for helping to defray the cost of our event this morning and for their continued contribution to our organization. ExxonMobil, ConocoPhillips, Chevron, Occidental, Chevron Phillips Chemical Company, Total and Total Petrochemicals, and Golden Pass LNG. So again, we really appreciate this and we thank you for all that you do for us. Your Excellency, our chamber was founded over 16 years ago by Ida Araisi, and I know Ida's here in the room. And um, we are blessed to have been given the honor and the privilege over these many years to host several foreign leaders uh, from forums just like this one this morning to state level dinners both here and in Washington DC. We've hosted His Highness the Emir and uh, here in Texas we've hosted uh, President Mubarak of Egypt, Her Majesty Queen Noor of Jordan and um, co-hosted King Abdullah from Saudi Arabia including nearly every energy minister and NOC CEO in the Gulf and it is in that warm spirit that we welcome you here today. 
Your Excellency, we look forward to your keynote remarks in just a bit. But first, with your permission, we would like to offer an opportunity for several key international oil, gas, LNG, and petrochemical companies to first offer their perspective on the energy landscape of today, and in particular, their view of the Gulf, uh, perhaps Qatar in general, and to the extent they feel comfortable, maybe a few observations on their relationship with the QP and the QP family. So with that, let me offer uh, and invite to the stage uh, five panelists that have uh, blessed us with their presence today and have volunteered to offer uh, observations about uh, these matters. So first, let me invite Rich Kruger from ExxonMobil. Rich is the president of ExxonMobil Production Company, and he joined Exxon in 1981, so 31 years, Rich, you've been in the industry. He's held his current position since 2008. Mr. Jay Pryor. Jay is the vice president of business development of the Chevron Corporation. Jay joined Chevron in 1979, 33 years ago. He's held his current position since 2006. And I might add that Jay had a leadership role in establishing the Center for Sustainable Energy Efficiency at the Qatar Science and Technology Park, or as we know it, the QSTP in Doha, where Qatari engineers, scientists, and students will be trained to build energy efficiency expertise and capabilities. Mr. Matt Fox. Matt is the Executive Vice President of ConocoPhillips Corporation. Matt has more than 28 years in the industry. He's uh, been with ConocoPhillips most of that time, having recently rejoined the company when Conoco bifurcated their company uh, back in uh, early May of this year. And uh, Matt rejoined uh, ConocoPhillips at that time reports to Ryan Lance, the CEO and Chairman of Conoco, who also sits on our Board of Advisors. Mr. Zen Smati. Zen is the CEO and President of GDF Suez in North America. He joined GDF in 2001, 11 years ago, had, had his current position since 2006, and has been in the industry just as long as these other gentlemen. Mr. Sandy Lowe. Sandy's the President of Oxy Oil and Gas in charge of all international production, joined Oxy in 1985, 27 years ago. He's held his current position since 2009. Your Excellency, any five men operating nearly $1 trillion in assets with what I calculate as a combined 139 years of experience among them, they don't need me to moderate. So what I would like to do rather than moderate is just turn the panel over to these five men to self-moderate if, if that's uh, agreeable to you. His Excellency, as I said, is on a very tight schedule, so we'd like to allocate about 25 minutes or roughly five minutes each, if that's okay with you. As I said, we'd appreciate any perspective that you could offer on your company's history with Qatar, perhaps the QP, possibly your assessment of the current energy landscape and the region in general. And if you have interest, any observations that you would like to offer about doing business in Qatar, and particularly with the QP. So with that, let me begin with Rich uh, Kruger on this end, and Rich, and we'll just let you guys just go down, go down the road. Okay. Thank you, David. You know, I must, uh, I must have uh, misread the email, because when I saw it was 25 minutes, I thought it was 25 minutes each. So I'll try to leave a few minutes for these other guys. So sorry, fellas. It's the benefit of going first. Your, uh, Your Excellency, Dr. Mohammed al Sada, Minister of Energy and Industry, distinguished uh, guests and delegates, ladies and gentlemen. You know, it's really my honor, my pleasure to be here this morning and to welcome His Excellency, uh, Dr. al Sada, and the senior executives from, from Cutter Petroleum, from Ross Gas, Cutter Gas, QP, uh, QPI, to Houston. You know, this is, this is our home, and I hope you feel uh, when you visit here, it's your home as well. So we're, we're real pleased to, to have you. I'd also like to thank the uh, bilateral, the U.S. Arab Chamber of Commerce, for organizing the forum. Uh, ExxonMobil really commends this organization. You do an outstanding job. We're pleased to be a part of it in the work you do in fostering the relationships between the and business and cultural between the United States and the Arab world, we think is just tremendous. So, so thank you much. I'd like to focus in my comments on partnerships. I'm often asked, you know, what constitutes a, a successful partnership between big IOCs and uh, national companies or national oil companies. And when I'm asked that question around the world, I, I uh, without hesitation, I reflect on the success of the 
partnerships in Qatar, not only Exxon Mobil's but others as well. And when I think about those partnerships, you know, what kind of strikes me is first and foremost is is Qatar's vision and leadership in managing its energy resources, the clarity that they bring to it. And, and you think about the, the uh, all you have to do is look at the incredible benefits that have been generated for the country that will last for generations to come. And it all starts with that real clear vision and leadership. It, uh, it's really, it's positioned Qatar as arguably the leading gas producer in the world. When you think of the, the numerous joint ventures, the benefits they deliver to the, not only the people of Qatar, the foreign investors, all of our shareholders, and, and really the people the world over from the energy supplies, new, safe, reliable energy supplies. Uh, when, you know, when governments and international oil companies can share a vision that's all centered around maximizing a country's, uh, the value of a country's resources, and that enables us to bring just our commitment to excellence in everything we do. And I think Qatar is a prime example to show that the results can really be extraordinary. Extraordinary in terms of bringing benefits in terms of the investment, the direct foreign investment, the social and economic growth, and the job creation and everything that flows from it. And, and these are really benefits that go beyond simply the potential for a better or brighter future for a country's citizens, but really benefits that deliver on that promise, deliver on that commitment. And they deliver in terms of health care, in terms of education, jobs, benefits that when you shine a spotlight on Qatar, benefits that are real clear and evident for all of us and all of the world to see. When, um, when I think of um, realizing the, the full potential of its resources in all regards, there again, I think Qatar is a really a prime example, perhaps the best example today in the world that we can all look at and see how the society has benefited from the, uh, that clarity and that vision on developing resources. And, I, and I'll tell you firsthand, I've, I've seen firsthand on, on my trips to Doha and things, just the change that continues to go on. And it's all, it's all made possible through, this, uh, through the vision of His, His Highness the, the Emir, the national vision, and again, the, this common clarity that is, uh, is, has been developed, shared, and understood by all. When you look at investments in uh, Education City, the Qatar Science and Technology Park, the, uh, the new Medical and Research Center, the new Doha International Airport, and you can go on and on looking at the, the many, many cultural venues that add to that, that whole overall picture. Um, ExxonMobil and Qatar, we've enjoyed a very long and successful partnership. It is a partnership that goes well beyond the business that Exxon supports uh, with Qatar. It includes social and economic priorities, contributes to programs in education, science, the environment, and sports. And uh, we're really pleased. Our commitment was recognized earlier this year when we were honored to rece receive the Qatarization Certificate from His Excellency Dr. Alsada. We, we very much appreciate and value that. With, within uh, our company, our role in contributing to Qatar's rise is a really, it's a sense of, uh, of pride for our, for our folks around the world. We, uh, we're often asked a lot, you know, Qatar's a, a small little country, and in a place like, like the United States, sometimes geographies are kind of forgotten or not particularly well understood. You know, we're taught a lot more about Texas geography when, we're, when we grow up than we are world geography. And we're really pleased and proud to help that educate and communicate and inform the world about really the success that is achieved in Qatar and our, our, relative, you know, our small role in, in achieving that success. So it's a sense of pride. As, as the world's largest supplier of LNG, you know, Qatar helps the world in many, many ways that uh, aren't always appreciated or recognized, but in terms of the, the, the global energy supplies, the diversification of it, and then really strengthening the energy security of places like Europe, Asia, and beyond. Uh, really important developments. Qatar's at the forefront of the global energy industry at this point in time. And when you think, when you look ahead and we look at the 21st century, there's no doubt that Qatar will be considered one of the world's largest and most important producers. And, uh, and equally meaningful, as I, as I wrap up, I think the, the progress and the achievements that have been made really validate the Emir's vision that was outlined several years ago. And uh, it's with that vision and the commitment of the state, the individuals represented here from Qatar, its partners, partners like ExxonMobil, that Qatar has been able to achieve the economic growth and development 
that we believe will continue to flourish well, well into the future. So I'll just wrap up and say that ExxonMobil is very proud to be a part of that growth in the past and in the future. And uh, thank you, Dr. Alsada, and we hope you have a wonderful stay here in our home. Well, thank you. I'll try to take over from Rich and uh, shorten mine a little bit as well. Uh, Your Excellency, thank you very much, Dr. Asada, for bringing your delegation here to Houston. Uh, many of you know Chevron's a California company, so uh, it's nice to see you uh, come to Texas, too, as well as uh, into the States. I'm uh, very pleased to be here to participate in this event. Uh, it's been nice to get an opportunity to spend some time with a number of different folks this morning and talk about some of the activities in the Middle East as well as in the state of Qatar. As Rich said, uh, some of us have been on the stage uh, and counted these years that we've all been around. And I'm, not, I'm really kind of taken by the, the experience on the stage these days. But many of us, when we first started our careers back oh so long ago, it seems like now, uh, there wasn't a lot to look at from LNG production out of the Middle East. In my mind, the state of Qatar put LNG in the Middle East on the map. My first jobs in Chevron were subsurface jobs, uh, petroleum engineering and the like, much like uh, Saad. But uh, when we sit down and think about it, what really changed was when we started to liquefy gas and move it around. I went through the reshuffling of the market in the U.S. in the late 80s. And without LNG, you wouldn't really think of anything but a little pipeline gas. And now the world's changed because of that. And the leadership the Qataris and Qatar put forward to the world, I think, is something to be celebrated. Many of you know Chevron in the Middle East. It all started right after World War I. Uh, basically uh, exhausted a lot of the supplies, and Chevron went into Saudi Arabia and Bahrain and founded the oil industry there in both places. And so as we uh, developed into uh, the company we are, Middle East has always been very important to us. The state of Qatar, our main developments are around Chevron Phillips Chemical Company. Being the head of our worldwide commercial business and looking for new business in both upstream and downstream, you know, I'll say right on, we don't have as much as we would like in Qatar. Unlike ExxonMobil, uh, you know, we would always look for a little more business. So as you're thinking about it, we want more. <laughs> we want more. Let's, let's just be straightforward right up front. But uh, thanks so much to the leadership, I think, and the things that we've seen. We've really established a presence in this Center for Sustainable Energy Efficiency. It's solar there at the technology park. It, uh, it's really been nice to work with you, Minister, and how that goes forward. Uh, I think uh, partnering with Green Gulf and uh, looking at the solar energy technologies in a place like the Middle East has been very eye-opening to me. Having, as I said, being a petroleum engineer, I think looking at renewables is uh, something that uh, is very important, I think, to our industry because uh, we kind of need all forms of energy as we go forward. With the Cutter's Vision 2030 and their aspirations on the sustainable future, Chevron and Green Gulf have worked to put together uh, a facility that we will uh, go ahead and dedicate here in the UN Climate Change Conference in Doha in December. And uh, thank you, Your Excellency, for agreeing to be there uh, to dedicate that. But that solar test facility will basically look at all the different possible s solar opportunities and see what's the most uh, relevant for Qatar and the rest of the Middle East. As we go forward, Chevron values partnership. And when you think about the global energy demand, I think the most important thing for us as energy people to realize is demand's going to continue to grow. I know as we sit around today and hear all the woe me about the economies in Europe and slowdowns in Asia and all those things, it's important to remember we all project a 40% growth in energy demand up into 2035. Billions of people are counting on us to come up with the fuel that's needed to either lift them out of poverty or continue to improve their standard of living. We in the IOCs and the NOCs and the governments of the world have to work together if we're going to make this happen. We at Chevron are among those investing heavily in this new future. Our capital budget in 2012, approximately $33 billion, is focused mainly on exploration and production and building legacy projects worldwide. 
our biggest project we've ever undertaken as a company in partnership with Exxon is also the Gorgon LNG project in Western Australia. Gorgon's more than 45% complete and will come online in the end of 2014. It'll supply enough LNG for a city the size of Singapore for approximately 50 plus years. Projects like Gorgon leverage technology and advance the supply and environmental stewardship worldwide. Gorgon will have the world's largest carbon dioxide sequestration and injection system, sequestering 3.5 million tons a year. It comes with one of the world's largest quarantine management systems to protect the island of Barrow Island, or the island of Barrow Island. Responsible development like this is coming increasingly important to our industry. As the public demands, gas markets grow and change with environmental sensitivity. Also, as you look around the world and look at the global gas market, shale has had an impact on that market in the last 10 years. Approximately 30% of the gas reserves added in the last 10 years have been from unconventional sources. A lot of these supplies from Europe, Canada, the US are all being put on over the next 10 to 15 years. And a decade later, we'll start looking at additional supplies from other unconventional resources. The industry cannot follow the same global oil market template for growth. There are a lot of differences to the gas market. A lot of issues around supply chain, a lot of issues around transportation, and moving the product to the market. Another challenge varies around regional differences and the resource endowments, where they're located relative to the market endowments. Also, all the skilled labor that's going to be required from our industry as well as service industries to uh, be able to add to that. When you look around the details of this new development, a lot of the areas are still uncertain. As a petroleum engineer, I wouldn't say we know a lot about the resources in Europe, Asia, or Africa. The shells that we had in the US, we drilled through to get the other energy sources, like oil. So the data was there, a lot of well bores. In a lot of the new areas, it's not like that. You don't have a lot of scientific information to base your claims. Our focus is not restricted to North America. We're an international company. We look for these opportunities all over the world. And we're a, a firm believer that the Middle East has a lot to offer, and Qatar in specific. Thank you very much, and look forward to working continually. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, Your Excellency, Dr. Al Sada, distinguished officials from Qatar Petroleum, QP International, Qatar Gas and Ras Gas, and members and guests of the bilateral US Arab Chamber of Commerce. You can probably tell from my accent that I'm not from Texas, but I got here as fast as I could. So they, uh, they, uh, it's, a, it's a pleasure to address you today on behalf of ConocoPhillips. Um, and we're a company that's recently reinvented ourselves by uh, splitting our upstream and downstream company, and now we are exclusively focused on exploration and production as an independent E&P company. And since becoming that independent company in May of this year, um, we uh, are focused on operations in about 30 countries around the world. So we're a, uh, we're very, uh, we're a very diverse E&P company. And our vision is to be the, the company of choice for all of our stakeholders by focusing on excellence in E&P uh, development and operations. But this applies not only to our financial and operating performance, but also to the way that we do business. Uh, we've long had a tradition of uh, placing an emphasis on safety, health and the environment and uh, corporate social responsibility. And, and we uh, uh, exhibit that, we believe, um, in the opportunity that we have to participate in the E&P sector in, uh, in Qatar. So most of you are probably familiar with our heritage in, in Qatar. It uh, started with um, uh, the QCHEM project and then su uh, subsequently went through to the Qatar Gas 3 uh, LNG project in, the, in 2010. Uh, we're very committed to the state of Qatar and since uh, our QG3 joint venture um, represents a very important part of our company's international portfolio. 
we appreciate the opportunity to second experienced ConocoPhillips personnel uh, into uh, Qatar Petroleum as, as part of our ongoing commitment to the, uh, to the, the country's uh, development. We also have a big passion in the company for new technology in areas such as LNG, unconventional resources, deep water development, oil sands, Arctic. And uh, as part of that, we have um, uh, been proud to establish and operate the ConocoPhillips Global Water Sustainable Sustainability Centre at the Qatar Science and Technology Park. We have patents registered already with, uh, um, um, and awards from various Qatari and world organisations for the achievements in just over two years since, the, uh, since this uh, project started. We have a lot of faith that Qatar will be uh, the beneficiary of these innovative solutions that are going to be developed at the Qatar Science and Technology Park, and we're proud to be part of that. We're proud to be um, involved in the Qatar community as well. In this context, for the last five years, We've adopted an ambitious corporate social responsibility program to invest funds into the development of non-government organizations and initiatives in Qatar. Our social, economic and environmental initi initiatives in this regard are really strategically positioned to feed the Qatar 2030 national development vision and the associated economic plans with that. Uh, they comprise uh, things like youth development and education programs, through cooperation with leading Qatari international uh, and other international entities such as Qatar University, Qatar Foundation, and Texas A&M in Qatar. They, uh, we're, so we're very pleased to be involved in that part of, of Qatar's development and the contribution to the, uh, to the region and to the world. So in conclusion, I'd like to say that our company, like the other IOCs present in Qatar, we've been privileged to be part of the emergence of the country as an ever-growing giant in the energy industry worldwide. We're pledged to further our relationship to respond to Qatar's future needs. And we'd like to emphasize uh, our respect for and admiration for the leadership of the country that has adopted the cause of developing the energy industry in Qatar as a vehicle for economic growth for the people of the country and the people of the region. And we believe that under the visionary leadership of His Highness the Emir, of the state of Qatar. The, Qatar has become one of the fastest growing economies in the world and a beacon in the region for what is possible, possible under inspired leadership that takes a long-term view of the benefits of the country. I'd like to thank you, Dr. Osara, for being the remarkable leader that you are the, uh, and one who inspires friendship and uh, trust and respect uh, among all of, the, all of the people who do business with, with the country. I would also like to, to, to thank our partners in QP and Qatar Gas for their support and cooperation. And finally, I'd like to, to welcome uh, the members of the various Qatari energy companies today to the home of, of our corporate headquarters here in Houston. And I hope you feel very, very welcome here, just like we feel welcome when we visit you. So thank you. Well, good morning. Uh, and thank you to Steve and Aida for organizing such a fine event. And welcome to Dr. Al Sada to Houston, Texas, from a native Texan. Qatar is clearly uh, a key country for GDS US. We consider our relationship with Qatar the first LNG exporter in the world to be of the highest importance. GDS US is active in uh, all of its businesses around the world, but especially, especially in the Gulf. We are active in uh, Saudi Arabia, we are in Oman, we are in Bahrain, uh, we are in Dubai and Abu Dhabi, as well as Kuwait. However, in Qatar, we are doing something truly unique because of the foresight of the Qatari government and the Qatari people. Today, if you look at our activities in Qatar, we are in natural gas, we are in power generation, we are in energy services, and we are in the environmental services only in Qatar. So let me give you some examples and be a little bit more detailed as far as these activities are concerned. If you look at the ENP business, for example, as you know, we are in offshore block four. Uh, in fact, we are drilling two exploration wells. The first one will be done by November. The second one is much deeper. In fact, it will be deeper than the North Dome field and will be in January. We know that the presence of oil and gas will be key to Qatar and you're watching that very carefully. 
Also in July 2012, uh, as you know, we welcomed PetroChina as a joint venture partner in Block 4. So that's really unique, and that's what we are doing on the NP side. But that's not the only thing that we are doing in Qatar. We also involved in combined power generation and desalination facilities. As you know, uh, we are in Araslafan B. That's a thousand megawatt, 300,000 cubic meters a day of desalination facility. And we were awarded that back in 2004. We're in Araslafan C, one of the largest power generation, combined power generation and desalination facilities in the world. 3,000 megawatt, 300,000 cubic meters a day. And that was, uh, in fact, it is uh, almost the biggest. And that was awarded to us. In fact, it was commissioned back in May of this year. And we're also interested in the extension of Raslafan C, as you know, uh, a smaller power plant, but it will really make the complex of Raslafan the largest, by far the largest in the world. And that is, again, unique to what Qatar is doing. If you look at our LNG business, uh, our relationship with uh, RAS Gas goes back a long way. It goes back to 2004 when we did the first deal in terms of buying five cargoes and trying to optimize both the cargoes coming from Qatar as well as the cargoes that we have here. We continue our discussion with Qatar Gas as well as RAS Gas to buy more LNG in the framework of a long-term relationship that, that we've developed over the years. That's the third activity that uh, we have in, in Qatar. The fourth one is really in wastewater treatment. Uh, again, our business there has been expanding over the years. Uh, we have commissioned Barwa City this year. We've commissioned Doha Rusail. And also, we are hoping to commission Dona West, uh, Doha West soon. So really, it is unique what Qatar is doing. Uh, we are spending around $50 billion in terms of capital investment over the next three years around the world. The Gulf is important to us, but really Qatar is truly uh, amazing, given the breadth and the depth of activities that uh, we were allowed to do there in partnership with, with Qatar. Our activities, as I said, are not new. They go back a long time. We are active in all of our businesses. And together, what is also unique is now we're working with Qatari, DR, and Barwa to establish a multi-utility company in order to build the city of the future just outside Doha. That is unique to Qatar. We clearly applaud the significant development that are taking place in Qatar, and we are, we are keen to continue the excellent relationship that we have there, both with the government of Qatar as well as the various companies in Qatar. Thank you very much, and welcome again to Houston, Texas. Good morning, uh, Your Excellency, distinguished QP guests, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'd like to thank the Chamber for letting me present today and join with you. I'm pleased to represent Occidental. We, our technical headquarters are here in Houston. Um, our corporate headquarters are in Los Angeles. Dr. Ray Arani, our chairman, sends his regards. I'd like to talk today a little bit differently from some of the other speakers. I'd like to give both a company perspective but a personal perspective. And I say that from the point of view I've lived and worked for nine years in Doha, two different times. I think that it is one of the best places to uh, develop oil fields. It's a great place to live. But more importantly, it's a great place to invest, and, uh, and it will be so for a long time to come. The picture I'd like to paint is that although the Middle East has some, as we say, issues right now in general, they really don't affect the state of Qatar. Uh, it remains a uh, growing economy, a great development, sustainable development, and a very stable place to live and work. When I first arrived in 1994, one of the very first managers I met was Dr. Mohammed al Sada. That was several promotions ago. And uh, we worked together on the handover of the Id al Shargi fields, which have been around for a long time by then. They were about 35 years old at that time. And uh, the cooperation, the professionalism with QP, Nasser Jada, 
was the uh, manager, the chairman of our management committee in all those years uh, for Yadel Shargi. And we put together a great team. We worked very closely with QP and local cuttery contractors. And we took, you know, an old oil field up to over 100,000 barrels a day and have kept it there for 18 years. Um, we've not done that by ourselves. We've done that with a lot of, lot of cooperation from QP and all of the, their uh, professional leaders. I returned to Doha in 2004 and spent three years as the uh, GM of Dolphin Energy. Dolphin, many of you know, is the first time three great GCC company, countries have gotten together and uh, worked to supply energy and uh, commerce to each other, Oman, the UAE, and Qatar. It's been a great success, for, uh, I think, for all three of the uh, countries and the partners. Um, during that period, Saad Al-Kabi was uh, in charge of uh, our destiny uh, in the Dolphin Project. Since then, we've moved on to Oman, Bahrain, Iraq, uh, Abu Dhabi, Yemen. I've got to say, though, that uh, the, the professionalism and the relationship with the state of Qatar is probably the longest and most stable that we've had. In Qatar, we've, uh, and like many places in the Middle East, we try to develop the people, and, and uh, like ExxonMobil and others, we're working very hard on bringing Qataris along and the Qatarization. Um, we have a mentoring program, a training program, a secondment program, as all of the rest of the companies probably have, and uh, this is working well for us in the state. We also have a social responsibility program, and it's not just about putting money in various charities. It's about finding the right places to develop and, and do the right things in the country. Um, the most recent event that we've hosted is something quite different for us. It's called Malawal, and it's an important exhibition of private cuttery collections of rare and precious objects and works of three generations of cuttery artists. Um, this has been an eye-opener for us as to how much interest there was in His Excellency, His Highness the Emir came along and uh, was, seemed to be quite happy with it. Uh, this was done in conjunction with the Cutter Museum Authority. So we at Oxy understand uh, how to do business in the Middle East. We understand the value of a relationship, and uh, we value no other relationship higher than working, continuing to work with these gentlemen. I would say that Qatar will remain an excellent place for all of us to invest and work in the, in the next 50 years. Thank you very much. Thank you again to our panelists. It is with great pleasure that I introduce my distinguished friend, His Excellency Dr. Mohammed bin Salah Al Sada, the Minister of Energy and Industry for the State of Qatar. His Excellency also serves as the CEO of Qatar Petroleum and the chairman of its board. He knows the company and energy sector very well, as you've heard from many of our panelists today, having joined the QP over 29 years ago. His Excellency was appointed Minister of State for Energy and Industry Affairs in 2007 and served that role with honor until being appointed by His Highness the Emir as Minister of Energy and Industry on January the 18th of last year. Ladies and gentlemen, please extend a very warm Texas welcome to His Excellency Dr. Mohammed bin Salah Al Sada. Very good morning to you all. It feels different whenever we come to this city, uh, and it, uh, it's, it feels uh, 
a lot different when we meet with friends like you here in uh, Houston. Uh, friends and partners with whom we have been working hand in hand uh, for many years. Uh, we saw the commitment of you all, be it partners or technology providers, consultants or contractors. Distinguished industry leaders, ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning to you all. I'm very pleased to be here with you today in Houston and hope this important event will result in some fruitful exchange amongst the industrial uh, leaders present here. Successful entrepreneurs has transformed this city into one of the most dynamic American communities. It is now home of the Texas Medical Center, uh, the first US maritime port, NASA's uh, uh, Johnson Space Center, largest petrochemical plants in the world, and of many more large and small businesses. Only New, only New York City is home to more Fortune 500 headquarters. Let me begin by sharing with you the story of uh, Qatar's transformation from uh, a history of pearl diving center to a modern country with the highest per capita income uh, in the world today. With just over one and half million residents, Qatar's population is one of the smallest in the Arab world. The country is roughly the size of the state of Connecticut. Other than oil and gas, its natural resources are negligible. Whatever we lack in size, we make up in spirit. Our history to commercialize our hydrocarbon resources started nearly 80 years ago. However, the discovery in the early 70s of the Northfield, the world's largest single gas reservoir holding 900 trillion cubic uh, feet of gas, gave a tremendous boost to our industrialization process and became a major turning point in our journey. Undoubtedly, the biggest challenge for us in recent memory was the commercialization of this reservoir, which holds uh, Qatar's majority hydrocarbon reserves in the form of gas and condensates. Since Assuming the leadership of the state of Qatar in 1995, His Highness the Emir, Sheikh Hamad bin Khalifa Al Thani, had uh, a great vision for the development of the country. This, of course, needed a huge investment, and the development of Northfield uh, therefore assumed a very high priority. The only immediate available option uh, for Northfield development was LNG, which was a very difficult business to break into. In the mid-90s, there were very few LNG buyers, and uh, they tended to prefer established sellers with a proven track record of reliable delivery. We did a lot of work to overcome this barrier but two particular initiatives stand out. The first was of our willingness to take some bold risks to achieve our aims. We started work on the construction of the Ras Lafan port at a cost of some $1 billion, considered a very large sum in those days, before any of our uh, of, of the main LNG sales uh, agreements or venture partners were finalized. This sent a very powerful message to our customers about our determination to be successful. 
The second thing we did was to establish a strong partnership with the international oil companies, some of whom are present here today. These companies were willing to believe in our challenging plan and were willing uh, to work with us. They brought strong reputations, technology, and project management skills that provided vital support to getting the project off the ground. The past two decades have witnessed an unabated and unprecedented development of the hydrocarbon industry in Qatar. The success we had with the uh, initial Qatar gas and Ras gas LNG ventures went some way to meeting our ambitions. But we wanted to do even better. We established what was uh, at that time a revolutionary new LNG business model. The old model was based on selling the entire nameplate capacity of each plant under a single sale and purchase agreement with the oil uh, price indexation. Around 2003, together with our partners, we developed uh, a completely new business model that enabled us to sell into uh, the traded markets of the UK and the US and accept the price risks of those markets. At the core of this model and the core of our strategy was the flexibility to deliver LNG volumes from one region of the world to another. In parallel, we looked at other ways to commercialize our gas. Uh, we did uh, a deal to export pipeline gas to the UAE and Oman. We established our two world-class gas to liquid projects. We expanded our petrochemicals and fertilizers businesses. And here we are today, the world leader in LNG, producing 77 million tons per annum and supplying LNG to all corners of the world. It is worth mentioning that as of today, there is no close second LNG exporter near to Qatar. The next one, is less than one third of Qatar's production capacity. With two of the biggest gas uh, to liquid plants, Qatar is also known as the gas to liquids capital of the world. The APEX organization behind the implementation of His Highness the Emir's vision for Qatar and bringing about all these transformation has been uh, Qatar Petroleum, QP as it is uh, popularly known. QP is the national oil company of the state of uh, Qatar and um, I personally am proud uh, to be associated with it for the last uh, 30 years. Uh, it is a fully integrated organization managing uh, the hydrocarbon resources of uh, Qatar by being involved uh, in its whole spectrum of activities uh, domestically and globally, both in upstream and downstream uh, sectors. Ladies and gentlemen, let me digress a bit from talking about uh, Qatar's oil and gas sector and share an insight uh, of uh, our uh, other developments. Like Houston did in its time, uh, Qatar's primary target for development encompassed medical services, uh, aerodynamic industry, uh, port construction, petrochemicals, tourism, service sectors, sports, research, and education. We are proud to have uh, been awarded 
uh, to host the FIFA Soccer World Cup 2022. It is clearly demonstrates confidence in our capacity and credibility. Through uh, Qatar National Vision 2030, Qatar aims to accelerate the growth underpinned by four uh, interrelated pillars of development, namely human, social, economic, and environmental. Each pillar encompasses a set of development outcomes towards which the country aspires. The oil and gas industry in Qatar has supported the, this vision through promotion and establishment of linkages between the national research and development programs of the universities in Qatar to the need of the industry. Strong alliances and coordinated efforts between the two is the uh, sure way forward. This uh, will align the goals of industrial projects, planning with research initi initiatives, paving way for successful implementation of the future oil and gas projects, which are harmonious and uh, eco-friendly, ensuring uh, their sustainability and competitiveness. In this regard, I would like to mention that major international and gas companies are currently operating uh, research centers in Qatar Science and Technology Park to build a solid technical and research base, not only for fossil energy resources, but also in new and renewable energy technologies. Accordingly, Qatar has created an appropriate investment environment through appropriate legisl legislation and promulgation of laws to promote and stimulate the local private sector and foreign investment in the industrial field. As per the recent, recently announced global competitive index posi positions for the year uh, 2011, uh, Qatar is the most competitive uh, economy in the region, ranking just uh, behind the 10 most competitive economies of the world. With a highly developed infrastructure, world-class uh, hospitality facilities, and a booming uh, economy. Qatar provides the right opportunities for the US-based energy and services companies. Some of them have already established their regional offices in Doha, the modern metropolis capital of uh, Qatar. Qatar Airways, our flag carrier, links uh, uh, Qatar to more than 120 business and leisure uh, destinations around the world. And the list is growing. US is already linked uh, through three important cities, including Houston, and uh, a number of new US routes are planned by next year. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to conclude, hoping that my brief recount of uh, uh, Qatar has given you a taste of what uh, our small nation has achieved in a, a relatively short span of time. I also hope that the forthcoming US uh, presidential election, which is uh, uh, less than six weeks away, will usher a new positive era for the US, the global energy industry, and for the benefits of the uh, world community at large. Thank you very much, and all the best to you. Dr. Alsada has agreed to uh, take just a few questions, so I thought I would pose two or three while we still have a few minutes of, uh, of a time. Dr. Alsada, uh, what would you view as the key challenges to the QP and to Qatar uh, and perhaps opportunities as we go forward? Uh, like uh, 
most of the oil companies, if, if not all, uh, uh, our challenge is actually, is basically to avail uh, energy because uh, we are in the, in, in, the, in the business, very responsible business, um, availing very strategic, important uh, commodity to the world. Um, to do that, we need uh, basically uh, to uh, improve efficiency, to go back to our fields and uh, introduce technologies, uh, and uh, extract more of oil, prolong the life of uh, the, the fields, uh, taking care, utmost care of the safety and environment, uh, in addition, obviously, we have to uh, look after the, uh, our own uh, personnel, especially with um, the fact that we started to see uh, a challenge to uh, recruit experienced uh, oil and gas uh, personnel uh, it was uh, a very much a kind of surprise to all of us that we see a lot of uh, people retiring and uh, those who are uh, the, uh, the, the impression about the uh, uh, baby boomers, the young, the vital, they surprised us by starting to uh, retire. And those people are the, uh, the, uh, those who have the experience, the knowledge, and... Uh, um, the, the, um, the, they, are, they are the decision makers, if you like. So uh, human resources uh, is a challenge and we have to responsibly meet it. What would be uh, Qatar's position on renewable uh, energy resources and do you see any, any uh, opportunities uh, for investment in that field? Well, we think that uh, renew renewables actually is needed and uh, we all need to uh, uh, support it and uh, uh, it is facing uh, a lot of uh, challenges to to be more economical more economical and uh, more efficient and we we uh, we think that the world uh, needs all sorts of uh, energy uh, sources and a little bit more in order to keep uh, reasonable, uh, sustained uh, GDP growth. Uh, QP is very much open-minded about renewables and uh, we are uh, looking at uh, uh, the potential investment in renewables. Uh, we in Qatar already started um, a project to produce the polysilicon, which is the raw materials used for the uh, solar uh, panels and uh, uh, next year uh, the, the plant is going to be operational and we will be uh, exporting uh, polysilicon for wherever it's uh, needed. Uh, a lot of research programs in, in Qatar we are, we are participating in um, the, the uh, renewables and mind you that we have uh, uh, sunshine uh, all, uh, all the year round so the <laughs> The potential uh, for solar is great. You mentioned in your keynote remarks uh, Qatar's national vision 2030. What would QP's role be in that national vision? Well, there are many roles, but I would like to uh, focus on uh, the, um, our vision to um, uh, have sustainable uh, economy. Diverse, di diversified economy and uh, uh, QP uh, with its uh, responsibility of exploiting the hydrocarbon resources efficiently and safely is basically the, the main uh, uh, tool to um, uh, help diversifying our economy. One is from within the industry i.e. Uh, oil, gas, petrochemicals, and, and the like. And uh, for that, we created 
Qatar Petroleum International Company, uh, which is uh, basically uh, investing and developing uh, projects uh, outside uh, outside Qatar. And uh, basically, we we are either already partner with some of you or uh, discussing potential partnership. Uh, and this is basically the diversification from within. Uh, the, uh, we also help in the diversification of our economy from without by being involved uh, in, in Qatar Holding Company, which, uh, which actually invest in services sectors, uh, in financial, uh, retail, uh, etc. Uh, that's a major uh, role. Uh, however, uh, we we participate in the in the other important roles too, like uh, uh, human development, uh, training, and 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 the like. Uh, research, education, uh, are are very important too. Thank you, sir. I'll ask one last question. I know that most in this room would be interested to hear your views on the shale gas revolution. Uh, what are your perspectives on that? Well, uh, shale gas or unconventional gas together with conventional gas, uh, they are uh, perhaps the, 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 the taken actually a uh, more bigger and more important uh, role in the energy than any other energy form. Shale gas is, uh, is certainly a game changer and uh, perhaps the biggest and most important game changer uh, in the uh, hydrocarbon industry over the last century or so. And um, with that uh, increase in reserve and production of uh, shale gas, uh, coupled with the uh, conventional shale gas being developed now all over the world, uh, the gas is uh, taking the uh, uh, the position it, it deserves as a environmentally friendly source of energy to bridge uh, humanity from uh, carbon intensive to, uh, if you like, uh, decarbonization. How long it would take? We don't know. Uh, but in reality, that the world needs all sorts of energies and a little bit more. And uh, we in our industry think so responsibly to avail this uh, uh, commodity. Uh, it's environmental uh, advantage over other forms of uh, energies is not distributed. And... Uh, Gas is penetrating now uh, all sorts of uh, energy sectors, and uh, you can see it's particularly moving in an exponential manner in the transport uh, market, in addition to its conventional uh, markets. Uh, and certainly, it adds a lot of value. It also contributes to the uh, security of supply, which is an issue in many regions of the world. So uh, gas, be it conventional or unconventional, actually settles a lot of uh, uh, worries about shortage of uh, energy. Uh, with uh, the, the technology developed, uh, it will definitely help in uh, reducing the cost of uh, producing and shipping the gas for uh, the international markets. And uh, the, the advantage here is that in our industry, development, especially the shale gas today, did not need any government support uh, or tax res relaxation or, or any of, of these. It's, basically due to concerted efforts from companies like you, uh, research and development, which actually 
took us thus far. Thank you, Your Excellency. I have a uh, small gift, and this is really from everybody in this room. I was told one time, I think it was my friend Nasser Jada, told me that you, if you produced your gas at full withdrawal rates, it would take 255 years, I believe, is what I was told. So if you ever run out, we have one more cubic foot of gas <laughs> for you. Thank you. This is, Thank you for coming today. Thank you. Thank you. If, if I could respectfully ask, we're going to lead the minister out with his delegation and a number of the IOC uh, executives that have private meetings uh, in adjoining rooms with uh, his delegation. So if I could ask that everybody stay seated to give us a chance to get out and stay on our schedule, I would really appreciate it. Thank you again for coming today, and we really appreciate it. Thank you.